Good morning, students. I hope all are doing well. And we have finished with the chapter two with the kingdom fungi. So we just have a overview of what we have finished up to this time. So we have finished with kingdom Monera, then kingdom Protista, then kingdom fungi. Now what is left out is the kingdom Plantae and kingdom Animalia. And in addition to these, there is another group of organism that everyone knows that is famous more now, that is about the virus. So, the one of the drawback that we are seeing here is that virus is not coming under any of these kingdoms. Okay. So, you can say that this is one of the drawback of the Whitaker. So, today we are going to see about the kingdom Plantae, kingdom Animalia and what are the general characteristics of the virus. Okay. So, hope all have done with your previous uh, syllabus. If any doubts, you can ask me. And now we are going to this today's topic that is the kingdom planet. Stay home, stay safe. So, the kingdom plant A, we will learn this kingdom more in detail in the next chapter because we are going to deal with the two kingdoms that is kingdom plant A and kingdom animalia in a very, very detailed way. So, here is just an introductory part. What is a kingdom plant A and what are the general characteristics of the kingdom plant A? I think everyone knows what are the characteristics. First of all, it's a eukaryotic. You know, what is eukaryotic? They are having a proper nucleus and they are having all the cell organelles with the membrane bound. Clear? And another thing is that they are photosynthetic. What do you mean by photosynthetic? Or you can call another name, autotrophic organism. So, what is autotrophic organism? The organism that can make their own food with the help of the raw materials, sunlight, water, then carbon dioxide and the chlorophyll. And this process you will call it as the photosynthesis. So the plants prepare their food material with the help of photosynthesis. And there are some exceptions are there like some of the plants are heterotrophic or you can say it's partially heterotrophic. We are having insectivorous plants and the example that is given here for the insectivorous plants is bladderwort and the Venus flytrap. You will come to see the pictures of this. It's very interesting to see this uh, plants. And one insectivorous plant that is the cascuta. Sorry, it's a cascuta that is a parasite. Okay. And what is the another characteristics of the plant? They are having a cell wall. And what is that cell wall made up of? The cell wall is made up of cellulose. Clear? This much points are clear for you. And another thing that you have to learn here, something new for you, that is in their life cycle, they are having two phases. The one phase is called as the sporophytic phase and the other phase is called as the gametophytic phase. So, uh, the word gametophyte, let's start from the gametophyte. The word gametophyte, that means the gametes and we know that the gametes are haploid. How you will represent haploid? That you will represent by the N. Before also we have seen, so it is represented by the letter, small letter N. And the next part of their life cycle is 2N. Okay, 2N means what do you call for the other name? That is a diploid organism. Yeah, the diploid phase. So, N represent the haploid phase and the 2N represent the diploid phase. So, in the life cycle of plants, what will happen? The first gametophyte will come. Yeah, first sporophyte will come and it will alternate with the another generation. Like gametophyte, sporophyte, then gametophyte, then sporophyte. Okay, like that it will undergo alternation of the generation. So, whenever you hear the word gametophytic generation, that means that represents the haploid phase in which only one set of chromosomes are present. And when you see the sporophytic state, that is a diploid phase and that contains the double the set of the chromosome. So, if an organism is having a gametophyte of 6, that n is equal to 6. So, what about the diploid condition 2n? 2 into 6. What is 2 into 6? That is 12. Understand? So, that is how they alternate their generation. So, sporophytic generation alternate with the gametophytic generation. And that process you will call it as alternation of generation. And one more thing I have to stress here. In some of the plants, the diploid phase is the most dominant one. That means they remain in the diploid phase for a very long time. So, you will call the dominant phase as the sporophytic stage. And in some of them, the gametophytic stage is more dominant. 
so you will call up as the dominant phase is the gametophyte and in some of the organisms both are having equal equal partners so we can say that they are the neutral plants because they are having the half their life cycle with the sporophytic generation and half the life cycle with the gametophytic generation okay so these are the different uh, phases that will happen in the plants life cycle and you will call them as the alternation of the generation clear now let's see what are the different characteristics so they are the eukaryotic organism they contain chlorophyll and some of them are partially heterotrophic like insectivorous plants as well as some are parasite now what are the examples of insectivorous plants we are having here bladder wort and the venus flytrap and what are the examples of a parasite it's the cuscuta and the other important feature is they are made up of a cell wall and the cell wall is made up of cellulose they are having two phases in their life cycle so you have to note here diploid two end so whenever you hear the word diploid that is a sporophytic stage and if it is haploid that is end that represents the gametophytic stage that means they alternate with each other and you will call this phenomena as the alternation of generation to n to n n to n n to n like that it will go and this phenomena is called as the alternation of generation clear so this is a picture of a bladder wort we know it's an insectivorous plant see how beautiful it is see another one that is venus flytrap it's again an in, in, uh, insectivorous plant you can see the structure of this plant here okay so whenever the insects comes here the insects comes in this side what they will do they will close that covering that's why it's called as flytrap trap karte and what they are trapping they are trapping the insect so it's called as the insectivorous plant and this is cuscuta many might have seen this plant they are the parasite they live on other uh, plants and they extract all the nutrients from the other plants okay now let's see the classification of the plants according to vitacus so the plantae the kingdom plantae is divided into algae then comes a bryophyte then comes a pteridophyte then comes the gymnosperm and the angiosperm again i am tell you the detail part you are going to learn in the next chapter that is chapter 3 about the plant kingdom okay it's, it's just an intro part here so let's see so algae then comes the bryophyte then comes the pteridophyte then the gymnosperm and the angiosperm so these are the five classes or the five groups that is coming under the plant day so algae then bryophyte then pteridophyte then gymnosperm then angiosperm okay now this is what i am showing here alternation of generation so already we defined what is alternation of generation that is the plant alternate between a diploid what do we say diploid sporophytic generation and a haploid that is called as the gametophytic generation so let's see here in the life cycle has been given if you want you can draw this diagrammatic view in your copy so it will be easy for you so half of them is as blue color one and that represent the sporophytic phase and you can see here zygote diploid that is 2n then the sporophyte the organism that developed from the zygote that is also diploid 2n now come down so the division that going to take place is here is the meiosis so after the meiosis so meiosis before meiosis it's 2n okay then after the meiosis then meiosis will takes place and the result of the meiosis is that this 2n that will be reduced into n so this is a division called the reduction division reduction means it will reduce into half the number of chromosome if it is 16 i'm writing here a number just i'm writing a number here so if it is 16 now it's divided by 2 that's what's happening in the process of meiosis it's divided by 2 what you will get here it's the 8 so the haploid set is the eight chromosome so after the meiosis the diploid will be reduced into haploid i just wrote one number so that it will be easy for you to calculate understand i think it's clear for you so this diploid will undergo the meiosis and it will convert into haploid and these are the spores 
and this haploid spores when they fall down they will germinate and they will put forward the generation called the gametophytic generation and from these the gametes will be coming out which are the gametes one is a male gamete okay and other one is a female gamete so male and female gametes are formed then what will happen this male and female undergo fertilization and they will form the zygote so can we see how it is getting altered okay the first the sporophytic generation then it will undergo meiosis and it will develop into the gametophytic generation the gametes have been produced the male gamete and the female gamete they will fuse with each other okay they will fuse with each other and the resulting product is called as a zygote and the zygote is having the diploid so it represent the sporophytic state so this picture this uh, diagrammatic view you can uh, draw schematic representation you can draw in your copy so that will help you to find out what is a alternation of the generation okay so the last one that we are going to discuss is about the kingdom animalia nothing to discuss because we all belong to the kingdom animalia of course we are having eukaryotic structure and we don't have the cell wall our cells they having a plasma membrane but there is no cell wall and we either directly or indirectly depend upon the plants for food so what we have been called you have been called as a heterotrophic organism okay because we cannot synthesize our own food only the plants with the chlorophyll can synthesize their own food so we are all called the heterotrophs okay and we have a digestion process in our body and the mode of nutrition is holozoic and another important thing we are capable of movement okay if anyone is chasing us what is a exact thing that we will do we will keep on running but the plants cannot run okay so we are having a locomotion capacity so these are the general characteristics of animalia okay so our kingdoms are over so kingdom monera then kingdom protista then kingdom fungi then kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia clear now what is left out here is the viruses so the vitacker was not able to classify this virus in any of these kingdom so we are going to learn the virus as a separate form okay now now everyone knows that nowadays the most challenging task that the whole world is facing is about a virus attack that is a corona virus and why it's becoming a tragedy because this virus they are not a, we are not able to make any of the medicines we are not make uh, able to make any antiviral medicine if it is a bacteria we can use an antibiotic that antibiotic can kill the bacterial wall or lysis can be taking place but this virus the most mystery is that we are not able to study the metabolic pathways of the virus understand and how this virus behave this virus they are having the genetic material normally the rna they will enter the host organism and they will act like this is my cell okay once they enter into any of the host organism they will act as if they its own mechanism and they will start multiplying into that cell and it will undergo another set of infection so that's why we are not able to get any of the medicines for this viral diseases every time the viruses are coming it is undergoing mutation every then i think we heard that uh, they are again china and even in italy they are having another virus it's not another virus the same strain virus is getting mutation it's undergoing mutation at each and every time and they are forming a different strain okay and each and every strain we are not able to get the vaccine yeah any of the antiviral drugs because we are not able to study their metabolic pathways okay so this is a major drawback otherwise we have this much capability to have the technology to make a medicine for this virus but the metabolic pathway is still undiscovered for many of the virus so getting a medicine getting a antiviral drug is very very difficult clear so now we are going to discuss about the structure of the virus so the virus the word meaning of the virus is that it's a poisonous fluid and this word has been discovered yeah the name has been given by the pastor dj ivanovsky i have written here the name virus means venom or it's a poisonous fluid now the corona is acting as a venom it's a poisonous fluid and the name virus has been given by the pastor dj ivanovsky okay and another thing 
the MW, some scientist name has been given here, M.W. Bejernek, they demonstrated that extract of the inflected plant of tobacco, they can cause an infection on the healthy plant and this is because of a fluid of the contagium vivum fluid. I mean, just they are telling how complicated it is. Okay. Now, they are inert outside their specific host cell. Their genetic material, it can be either an RNA or it can be a DNA. Now, the virus is having a covering. It's made up of the nucleoprotein and there is a genetic material that is the most infectious one. Clear? Now, the viruses that infect a plant, they are having a single-stranded RNA and the virus that infect an animal, they can have either a single or double-stranded RNA or it can be a double-stranded DNA. Okay, again I am telling the virus that infect a plant, okay, the virus that infect a plant, they generally have a single-stranded RNA. But the virus that infect an animal, they are having single or double-stranded RNA or single or double-stranded DNA. You can see the difference. So, in plants, only one option that is a single-stranded RNA. But in animals, it can be single or double-stranded RNA or single or double-stranded DNA. Okay. Now, the virus that attacks a bacteria that you will call it as the bacteriophage. And this bacteriophage find a wide applications in the field of biotechnology. Okay. So, virus that infects a bacteria they are called as a bacteriophage and usually that bacteriophage is having a double stranded DNA viruses. Okay, I will show you the structure exactly and the protein covering is called as the capsid and the capsid is made up of the single units called as the capsomeres. Clear? So, what is the word meaning of virus? It means a poisonous fluid, yeah, venom and they are having an Proteinaceous coat, the name of the proteinaceous coat is the capsid and the capsid is made up of the individual unit called the capsomeres. They are genetic material, it can be either RNA or it can be the DNA. So, this is a structure of a TMV virus that is tobacco mosaic virus. So, here you can see it is a plant. So, you can see it is a RNA. Okay, it is made up of the RNA. Okay, and here can you see the structure? This is called as the capsid and the individual unit of the capsid is called as the capsome. It's a whole together, the whole together, the whole structure you will call it as capsid but the individual unit that you can see here, I'll draw here like, like this they have been drawn. So, these individual structures that you can see here, they are called as the capsomeres and this is a structure of a bacteriophage. All these uh, two diagrams have been given in your NCRT book. You have to draw and practice this diagram. One is a TMV virus and other one is a bacteriophage. Let's see the parts of the bacteriophage. It's having a capsid head. It's a nucleic acid. Okay, it's a double-stranded one. And it's having a collar part. Then it's having a sheath. And there is a base plate and there are spikes. This is the structure of the bacteriophage. I'll show you one video seeing the structure of the virus. A virus is considered to be like a small piece of genetic information which is contained inside a protein shell. Now that genetic information can be a piece of DNA or RNA, but the interesting thing about a virus is that it requires a living cell in order to replicate itself. Okay, that is the main part. All living cells including animal cells, plant cells and even bacteria. Before we begin talking we about begin how talking viruses about infect cells, cells, let's look at their structure look at first. Their structure. This is the genetic is structure the genetic of a virus. virus. There are actually six are actually classes six of viruses classes based on what's contained inside, inside this protein coat. So whether it contains so a double or single strand of DNA, DNA, or whether it contains a single or double single RNA, 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 to simplify it, simplify class it, 1 and 2 class viruses can contain viruses DNA and class DNA 3 to 6 contain RNA. RNA. Other components of the virus include this protein capsule, which contains the strands of genetic information. There are also some enzymes inside and the capsid is contained inside an envelope which is a lipid membrane. 
Viruses are the cause of many diseases, and the reason they cause these diseases is because of the way they replicate themselves. Viruses need a living cell in order to replicate. Firstly, the virus attaches onto the whole cell or wants to infect. It then penetrates the cell. The virus enters the whole cell by a process called endocytosis. Once inside the cell, viral enzymes break down the capsid which is surrounding the viral genetic information, causing the release of it into the cell. The virus then the takes virus over then protein takes production protein in the cell. The viral genetic the viral information genetic is replicated, and then we have the formation have of the new formation virus particles new virus inside, inside the cell. Inside the cell. Once there is an excess there is of virus excess particles of virus inside the cell, inside the cell they, are they are either released from the cell to travel, travel around the body to infect body other cells, or the cell containing cell all of the viruses of the burst, burst, releasing multiple releasing virus multiple particles virus and killing the host cell. This may sound this extreme may sound and it sounds like once you have been like infected by a virus, then it's the end. However, there are numerous ways the body can protect itself against viruses, which we will talk about in the next video. Clear? So they are showing how the virus is entering into a host organism and once they enter into the host organism their genetic material will pass into the host cell and I told you they act like as if it is their own machinery and they start synthesizing the more number of their yeah, replicate they start replicating the more number of their genetic material okay so like this it will attack the whole host cell okay so the best thing the the worst thing not the best thing the worst thing is that they require a host test cell for their replication. Now, the next part is about the viroids. Okay, uh, normally for your exams, there will be a question like what's the difference between a virus and viroids? Okay, so the term itself, we can say that, okay, viroids might be uh, smaller than a virus. So, this is Theo Dana's picture I am showing here. He is the one who discovered that there are particles which is smaller than virus and he discovered this as viroids in the spindle tuber disease of the potato okay now what are the differences it was found to be free dna free rna so it was found to be a free rna and they don't have the protein code but the viruses they have the protein code okay now the another difference about a virus and viroid is that the rna of the virus they are having a low molecular weight okay so first one it is found to be a free RNA they contain a free RNA and they don't have the protein coat and the molecular weight of that RNA is very low when you compare it with the virus so this is a picture of a viroid so it's smaller than the virus that's the thing that you have to keep in your mind the viroids are smaller than the virus and it has been discovered by the TO Diner while he was studying about the potato symbol, the spindle tuber disease. Okay. So this is a difference that you can see and you can write in your copy. What is the difference between a virus and the viroids? So here I am writing it is a nu nucleoprotein particle. It is a RNA particle. The nucleic acid can be DNA or RNA. Here it's only the RNA. Then here the protein covering called capsid is present but here the protein covering is absent. The virus has a larger size but the viroids have a smaller size. And this virus infects all types of organisms but the viroids infect only the plants. I think the difference is clear for you. You can write the difference in your copy and you can learn this one. The, what is the difference between virus and the viroids? Okay. Now the last topic that is given in your book is lichen that have already been discussed before also then just an um, revision we can do now. What are lichens? Lichens are the symbiotic association between an algae and the fungi. Okay. Now little bit detail we are going to do here. The algal component. So it's an association between algae plus fungi. Both of them live together. Both of them symbiose with each other so that they are helping each other in one or the other way. Now, what is the help? So, the algal part of the lichen is called as phycobion. Okay, phycology. Phycology means the study of the algae. So, the algal component of the lichen is called as the phyco and the fungal component is called as a myco. So, the study of the fungus normally we call it as the mycology. You have to learn these two new words. That is phycology, the study of algae. So, the algal partner is called as a phycobion and the study of fungi is called as the 
mycology so the fungal component you will call it as a mycobio now what is their symbiotic association they are how they associate with each other what is the work of the algae the algae can prepare the food for the fungi okay the algae can prepare the food for the fungi and what's the fungi doing for the algae the fungi they are providing the shelter and also they help in the absorption of the mineral nutrients as well as the water okay so fungi is giving them a shelter and they help to absorb the mineral as well as the water for its partner who is the partner here the partner is the algae okay so they are mutually they are having a helping hand for each other that is one is having a phycobiont role and other one is having a mycobiont so who is the phycobiont partner that is the algae what is the duty of the algae they prepare their food for the fungi and who is the mycobiont partner that is the fungi and what's the duty of the fungi they help in the absorption of the minerals and the water okay now wherever you have anyone seen any lichen in delhi might be not because the lichens are actually they have been seen in the places where there is less pollution so if your area is highly polluted everyone knows our place is highly polluted so we can't even see a lichen so only thing we can see now is the picture that i have given here this is the lichen okay and when you talk about the ecology the lichens are the first animals that can colonize an area okay and lichens are the ones that we can see in the areas where it is free from pollution so whenever you see a lichen in an area you can easily say that okay this area is of free of pollution okay but now unfortunately we are not able to see any of the lichens because of the highly polluted areas okay so the lichens previously we used to see the lichens and it's act as an indicator to decide whether this area is a polluted one or it's a non polluted one clear so it's a picture of uh, fungal hyphae so we can see this fungal hyphae help in the absorption of the minerals as well as the water which is helping for the algae and what the algae is doing the algae this is the algal layer so the algae is helping in the preparation of the food material okay so i think this topic is clear for you everyone so our kingdoms of rh vitacker is over that is kingdom monira kingdom protista kingdom Al Fun uh, kingdom fungi kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia and the other group that is a virus since it has not been included in any of the kingdom we have to study it separately and we have seen the structure of the virus especially we have seen the tobacco mosaic virus and the bacteriophage and finally we discuss the structure of the lichen and the lichens are might be a new information or might be a learn in smaller classes the lichens are the indicators of the pollution so let's expect a delhi with a lots and lots of lichen because we have to reduce our pollution thank you students have a nice day go through this topic